what it's happening is this is like a quiet revolution that's happening behind the scenes because the changes are actually coming in from a subatomic level and the and the, our atoms are spinning faster i know mine are i just, i know you know like i know my being so i i feel that they're spinning faster my vol- molecules are vibrating faster and the reason I, i'm sensitive to this because i've been in so many different realities i've been beamed up into so many different ships each race has its own vibration, so therefore my molecules were vibrating differently. Each time I came back, it took different rates of recovery. You know what I mean? So yeah. every, every reality has its own vibrational pattern. I've, well, I've even, um, dare I say, I've been to Mars, and, and that has its own vibrational reality. Well, and, uh, I haven't and, had any of those kinds of experiences, but I'm feeling that uh, too, George, uh, the, the, the w- strangeness in terms of frequency, the, how the time picks up, and, and the kind of the, almost a nervous jittery uh, feeling that is happening right now. But go ahead, George. Yeah, and we're in an acceleration of time. We're on a J-curve here. We're a logarithmic J-curve. It's accelerating, and, and I've got that in my harmonic equations. You know, we've got the fixed timeline of 24,832 years, and we have the illusionary timeline where you take that 24,832 years and you, and you increase it by 6.18%, which is 1 over phi, which is the Christ consciousness below unity, which is where we are. And that ends up to be 26,366.618 years. And I don't want to get all heady and technical about it. But, you know, it comes down to the point of um, the, the processional cycle being measured earlier on in, the, in last century and then later on in that century. And there's been an increase in, in, in the cycles. Mm-hmm. So when they measured it earlier on, it was 20, 25,800 years. And then, and then in the 80s, it was 25, 20. 5,920 years. So you can see that the acceleration is occurring. If they were to measure it now, and I challenge anybody to measure the processional cycle now, please do. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. You will see that it's over 26,000 years now. And then as we get closer now to um, 21st of March 2013, which is the critical point in time where the cycle actually ends, you will see it'll it'll add up to exactly 26,366.618 years. And so we're on this illusionary timeline that we're experiencing. So time is speeding up, definitely. And uh, the, the changes that are, we are about to go through. So what I want to share with people too, I'll preface that because um, the, the information that I'm about to share will just sound crazy and I know it will. And I've struggled with this for years. I really have. But when I keep going out and having these meetings with beings and all these other levels and I connect with Mother Earth and I connect with Father Son on the deep levels that I have, I I can't not say this anymore. And it sounds crazy and it sounds nuts. And my personal friends have, they enjoy everything what I say, but this one point in conjecture each time that this planet is going to become a being of light and and the point of time when it's going to happen. So... I'd, I'm just going to express it because this is what's in my being. It's not a program in my head. This is in my being, and I can't not say this. I have to speak my truth, so I hope people can can respect me for that. All and right, so sure. what we have here is is it has to do with 2012. Mm-hmm. It has to do with the ending of the Mayan calendar, and the cycle actually does not end on the 21st of December 2012. It actually ends on the 21st of March 2013 because it's not the procession of the solstices. It's the procession of the equinoxes. And the main calendars that a lot of people are studying are just a little bit out. Not much, just a little bit out in the harmonics. And they could say, well, don't be ridiculous. That's a ridiculous statement. But just like the Bible or any piece of literature, it's been modified down through the ages. So when you have the original pieces of the calendar, um, the outer lying sort of settlements, um, they had their versions of the same calendar. And so what we are just seeing is the very few pieces that made it through the millennia of, of a, an agenda of disseminating and uh, not disseminating, destroying any piece of evidence of life and it's true life cycles on this planet. Mm-hmm. So something got through. Some remnants got through. And that's what these people are studying, just a few bits and pieces that made it through of, of this incessant agenda of going around to every culture on earth and destroying everything that, that recorded the natural cycles of life. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. And, and that, so and that's, they're, they're that's just an, a, uh, Sorry, that's an explanation, if you will, then, on some of the... Uh, the behavior of uh, the Roman Catholic Church, for instance, and, and uh, the destruction of, of knowledge and of people and of cultures and of uh, 
we have the burning of witches and the you know the eradication of shamans and all that happening throughout human history so you're saying there's a there's a reason for that basically absolutely it was to totally take away the true knowledge of life and the natural cycles of life so we ended up being assimilated into this false and synthetic construct that we um we are conditioned into our societies with yeah so the the cycles actually end on the 21st of March 2013. Now, I, I have harmonic equations that are showing that, and I'm no mathematician, right? I'm just sharing this knowledge that I've, I've bought from within my being and from my journeys. And I ask anybody who knows anything about harmonics, please take a look at those equations because there's something there. Because that cycle of 24,832 years, that actually plugs into the DNA, our DNA, it plugs into everything, all the cycles, the cycles of time. The, it just plugs into so much, just that one equation. So it's, it's, it's not 26,000 years. It's, it's deeper than that. It goes deeper than that, okay? So um, what the events that will play out is that on the 21st of March 2013 is when the planet hits center, finds center. Because in order for a planet to ascend or any being to ascend, ourselves to ascend, for example, it's important for us to find center. W- would you agree with that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and that's, that's just being sensible about it. It's, it's not a major revelation. And so if Mother Earth is going to ascend and become a being of light, then she needs to find center. And this is where the scientific side comes into play because we're about to experience a pole shift. And on the 21st of December 2012, is when Mother Earth really starts to straighten up on her axis. She needs to find center. So the wobble will come to an end because the wobble was one of the aspects of creating a vibrational, underlying vibrational pattern, a field that we can, an environment that we can come and incarnate in to have the experiences of duality that we're having. It's, it's, a, it's one of the mechanics that set up this whole environment of duality that we're experiencing here. Um, so, one of the variables. And do, do you think that this, uh, what is it, 23.5 or so, uh, you know, axis shift or tilt that we have, was this, uh, some people have speculated that that was because of catastrophe or, or what have you or other reasons, but uh, th- this is a natural, uh, th- this this was meant to happen in that sense, right? This was a point. Oh, uh, yeah, from, yeah, from higher levels, everything that occurs is planned. Not everything is by design. There is no such thing as an accident. Hmm. Okay, Every, everything is by design. Everything you've experienced in your life is by your own design, by a higher aspect of your being. So there's no there's no accidents here because the moment you start entertaining the idea of an accident, you're giving your power away to something. You're blaming something outside of you, and that's just yeah, that's that's not really what life, the construct of life is. Yeah, yeah. And so it, th- and these. Can these things take different form? In other words, we can look at it from, yeah, okay, it might have been a, a, um, a, a planetary collision or something else, a calamity happening in our, in our solar system that created the circumstances. But again, that's just the outcome of, of uh, that's just how it looked to us from this, you know, from our dimension, from our reality. But the purpose is, is still deeper and it goes beyond that. Oh, very much so. Yeah, exactly. I, that's a very, very good way of saying it. And the moon has a big role to play in all of this too. Big, big sure. story about the moon. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't been here very long. I, I, my, my knowing is that it came, and I'm not absolute on this, but there are some things that I feel really, really absolute about. I'm not absolute on this, um, but I really feel strongly that the moon um, was placed here about 6,000 years ago. Um, that recently, huh? Yeah, I do. And you'll see that there was quite a um, calamity that took place geologically around that time. And there's a lot of good reasons why it came around that time. And it's interesting that uh, religions say that life started about 6,000 years ago. So um, mm. there's no, no coincidence there. Even the Masons, <laughs> I think. A.L., Anna Lucius, uh, they call it. It's about, uh, I think their calendar is almost up to 6,000 years right now. Yeah. And it has to do with the beings that uh, put the moon there and the beings that live inside the moon. Because mm-hmm. it's definitely an artificial satellite as just no doubt about that. Yeah, really. Yes, uh, that is interesting. Yeah. Do Do you think that we will uh, find these things out as well as we go as we go here as we proceed? There is now, uh, you know, other, other kinds of other nations have planning missions to the moon. There recently was a 
uh, um, photographs being taken on the backside of the moon and things like that. Do you think that we're in the age where more and more will become known, or, or how do you see this unfolding, yeah, George? Yeah, the way I see it unfolding, Henrik, is that we will know for ourselves. So everything that I'm sharing here is my experiences and my wisdom that I've gained throughout these experiences. But there is only one great truth in the universe. And the definition of truth or the one great truth is it's just the way things are. And the notion that all truth is truth is relative is, is a very dangerous notion because small truths, I will say, are relative. But the fact that you and I, Henrik, have this aspect of our being incarnated here on this earth at this time, in this part of the universe, is, is true for you and me, is true for everybody in the universe. That is a universal fact. Mm. It is not an illusionary concept. It's real. We're here. This part of us is here. And so the concept that this is all just an illusion as well, well, that's dangerous too because that just totally cheapens and, um, and devalues what's actually going on here on this planet. Um, it, it's, it's like this, just because you understand the way a television works doesn't mean you're just going to sit there the whole time and go, all I'm seeing is electronic signals just being placed into a screen and, you know, go the old cathode ray, buy a gun at the back of the tube onto a phosphorus <laughs> screen. And, you know, do you sit there just thinking like that the whole time? No, no you're actually going to sit back and enjoy the movie. Sure. And so just because we've discovered the construct of this reality through quantum physics doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean there's no value here for the experiences that we're coming here. It doesn't mean that we don't actually... Um, you know, this is all just a dream and illusion and there's nothing real about it at all. No, this is a reality. We've, we've, we've manifested this reality and we've come here for a reason. And there's good reasons for our existence here. So it's important not to fall into that trap because there are so many mind-bending philosophies out there that want to turn us against our existence here. They want to build that internal divide and that resentment towards actually your existence here. It's a very clever trap. So be careful of that. Now, going back to the events of what's going to transpire. My understanding of the events are that on December 21, 2012, there are openings that are actually going to close on that date. Now, these openings will start to happen towards the end of this year, probably around November. There'll be groups of people, small groups, that will start to walk through organic openings on the earth because this ascension process that I'm talking about is seeing it through with Mother Earth. You see, I, I've come onto Mother Earth. I'm here for a reason. I, people have come from all over the universe to be here. Why? Why did we come here? Did you come here just to be taken off by an ET? Did you come here just to walk through a stargate? Well, for some people, they're going to do that, and they think that's the right path. But there's much greater purpose for our existence here, for this great woman to, to have gone through what she's gone through. So again, you know, it's the, it's, it's the devaluation of the divine feminine and, and what, you know, and her very expression and existence is facilitating this, this very um, um, process here. So what's going to happen is these openings will start to occur, organic ones. And I'm not talking about technological stargates, portals or anything like that. Mm -hmm. These are just like, I call them doorways. And the sacred geometry behind, well, or not behind, that you can use to um, uh, define them in uh, a mathematical construct is a vesica Pisces. And so everything that I share, the, 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 the true knowledge is inside each and every one of us. So if you don't agree with what I'm saying now, that's fine, really, honestly, it is. Um, but there is the truth inside each and every one of us. And that veil will lift very soon. And people, I'm getting emails from people all over the world, Henry, honestly, that they are so resonating with what I'm saying because they know it for themselves, not because I said it. So when I communicate with people, it is really... I'm just providing triggers and people are off and running because, you know, I'm not interested in followers or anything like that. Sure. It is just for people. To, I'm, I'm here to empower people to stand in their own right. And so we are human. We are sovereign beings and we are here to go through this particular process, an organic process, not to be lured off world by mind-bending philosophies and technologies. And so I'm going to see it through with Mother Earth and these openings, it's the womb of the mother. And that's what the serpent rope is from South America. It's not a wormhole as some people have interpreted. It's actually the umbilical cord coming from the center of the galaxy. 